Welcome to the video review of Beast Hunter's Ripclaw. First things first, I don't get wrapped up in this Beast Hunter's chapter crap. The show isn't good enough to keep me interested, and neither is this sideline toy selling story gimmick. Second, I am so elated to see the Beast Movement making a comeback, even if it is only for the shortest and final season of TF Prime. I know I'll look back on this subline as a glimmering moment in TF history. That said, I had some seriously high hopes for season 3 of Prime, but the long-loved traditions of the show continue to trudge on as old favorites are regurgitated in the most lukewarm or worst way possible. Case in point being shortwave and ultra douchebagness. Although my little fanboy heart almost exploded when they dropped the words Beast Wars a few episodes back. The Beast Wars may be over, and the Truck Not Monkey Neanderthalisms may have faded in recent years, but the fact that the Beast Era saved the franchise and still continues to affect future lines is something that no G1 purist can deny. And now to Ripclaw. You'll never catch me saying that there used to be too few Dragonformers. Sure, Dragonformers are cool, and I love Cryotech, but I just don't feel like we need a whole bunch of them. Not like dinosaurs. We can never have enough Saurians. However, I can get behind the philosophy that Cybertron has its own wild beasts, and that they're not necessarily restricted to the classifications of Earthican animals. Ripclaw is a very enjoyable looking figure, all kicked off by her pleasant color scheme of teal and slightly pastel red. She's almost too soft of color to be a Predacon, but her harsh and angular design remedy that. But let's talk about the thing everyone wants to, the reason we question her femininity. All joking aside, this tail is awesome, and the grabby claw is our master. It chooses who will go and who will stay. And it's got a killer grip to boot. Almost enough to be a spark extractor. Haven't seen one of those in a while. Nice throwback. The trap draw like dragon head continues the lack of femaleness of this figure, as do the jaded neck horns. There's surprisingly little posability in the head, and while opening beast jaws are awesome, <laughs> these don't open up wide enough to be those of an eating contest participant. <laughs> let alone a mechanical alien monster with such barbarous biters. As a last note for this beautiful beastie, it's nice to see that they're finally putting the size back in size class. This Stella definitely needs to get her groove back, and by that I mean she needs girl parts. Whatever happened to the big old boobies they love to give girls back in the Beast era? Sure, it's weird, but damn it, if you're gonna go to the trouble of coming up with vaguely perceived genders within the bot race, you might as well go the whole nine yards and get a little naughty. Regardless of impracticality, this is no lady, and I refuse to accept it as such. Okay, maybe the collar could be viewed as one of those high-neck sweaters women like to wear, but even then, that's a stretch. And it has to be noted that that collar severely restricts the head movement. This helmet makes me think... Son of Ultron? The shoulder pads might have been useful and cool if they'd been on ball joints. How does this thing have the simplest trans standing up formation, yet still manages to generate shell former flaps? And on that note, either they hinder the wings, or they hinder the arms. No compromise. These wings are fine. They're just some wings, and they're definitely not not wings. It's certainly been made plain that I'm not a fan of direct limb-to-limb -limb transformation, but at least Ripclaw has the decency to alter them from one mode to another. Unlike some, the waist swivel seems somewhat necessary since so little transformation is present. With the tail weapon in the left hand, this figure is one beast head handheld weapon away from being one beautiful parallel to Beast Wars Megatron, custom pending. The marbly colored plastic continues to be a nice treat with this subline, especially on this figure. Not Pred symbol is not Pred. I'm really not sure where TF Prime is headed with these beasts, and while I haven't seen Predaking's robot mode in the show yet, it seems that we're falling back into the same problems of necessity that the Transmetal 2 line had. Why does this thing transform? It's not for transportation weapons or disguise, and I think the beast mode more than adequately covers combat, so... I hate to be nitpicky, but I do like things to be for a reason. This is a pretty good figure, and it'd have to get a lot worse for me not to buy a New Age Beast former. Which is not to say that this little cupcake isn't worth it. I can heartily recommend this to Beast fans, Transformers fans, Dragon fans, or anyone who likes their bots beastly, no pun intended. And beautiful. This has been the video review for Beast Hunter's Ripclaw, and thank you for watching.